a lot of times people are using cloud hosting providers that makes it very easy to deploy stuff like for example Vercel. but what also happens often is that when you get for example a heavy ddos attack the bill that you get because of that infinite scaling is enormous um, last time i checked there was a bill of 26,000 euros for a small indie hacking project so that's a problem so let's have a look a bit into self-hosting and we will have a look especially into uh, Hetzna and we will look into how to use the cloud load balancer using Let's Encrypt to route the traffic um, to a web server, which actually is pretty easy. So the first thing that we need to do is on the dns.hetzna and the DNS console from Hetzna to set up the domain um, that will be able or that will be handling the um, certificate verification from Let's Encrypt. So I'm using a domain that I'm not currently using. We have to add the record. We have to disable the auto scanning for records. And then we can just delete everything that's not a name server because we only need those name servers. <clears throat> and we continue. And now we have those name servers and these we have to add to a specific um, subdomain of the uh, domain in our domain provider. So I'm not hosting domains on Hetzna, but on AWS using route 53. Um, so we need to copy those. And how we would set that up is in route 53, we have this uh, DNS record here, um, which is Acme challenge uh, with an underscore before. So this is the value. And then, uh, or that's the record name, and then we use the um, name server record type, and then we post paste those uh, name servers here. So I already did that uh, because the propagation can take some time. So once we have set, set that up, uh, the next thing that we can do is just create a server. So we won't use infrastructure as code here. Uh, that's something that I will likely do in the next uh, video. So if you're interested in that, let me know. So we're just going to add a server. So I'm using Hetzner especially because uh, they already also have uh, locations in the US. But the good thing about this is for like smaller and medium sized projects, uh, it's very affordable um, to host a server. So for example, we are using here an Ampere um, CPU. Um, and then for example, the smallest one here is like uh, four euros a month, uh, which is extremely cheap. So we also won't use uh, public IPv4 because that costs extra. IPv6 is enough. Uh, we're going to use a private network that's already created. Um, that's super easy. You just go to networks and create a private network um, because we want to have that one also uh, where the load balancer is connected to. Um, and <clears throat> then the public IPv6, we need just to uh, be able to connect to uh, the server with SSH and select the key. And then I also have a firewall set up. Um, so in case you need backups, for example, if you have a database hosted on that or um, files, or whatever, you want to check the backups. Um, then there are some more configurations that you can do. So then there's also the cloud config, which you can use um, to basically just set up the server. Um, I have one that I most of the time use. Uh, obviously, that you can also do, um, for example, with Ansible uh, to set the server up in code, but that's it. So we're going to create and buy the server. <coughs> like I said, it's super cheap. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we would want to uh, create our load balancer. So that we just go here on the right and left side to the load balancer. We create the load balancer <coughs> and we want to place that here. We're going to take a very cheap one. So this one is uh, six euros 40. So that's, uh, I don't know, maybe $7 or so a month. Um, but the thing is you can connect five services and 25 targets. So with five services, that would mean you can more or less host five different projects there. We will see what services later. Uh, and then those can have like 24, 25 targets. So it's actually um, not too expensive, especially if you would host also multiple projects here. 
just using one load balancer, which is absolutely possible. So we will put that into the <coughs> network of our server. We define the, the target, which would be testing. We obviously take the private IP and then we can create a service. So the service that we want to create is a TLS termination. So this is basically allowing us to have HTTPS and the other one would be deleted. So then we would host something on the on the server, which we do later, just an Nginx, which basically um, has the port 80 uh, provided. We want to have a redirect from HTTP to HTTPS. And now what we need is obviously a certificate. Um, so in order to not need to handle anything ourselves, we're going to create a certificate. It will be a managed certificate. You can obviously name it however you want. And then we select the DNS zone. So that's why we had before uh, created that in the DNS console. And you can here, for example, also create a wildcard. So that's fine. We're going to do that. <clears throat> and now what's happening is that this certificate will be created. Um, and then that just takes a while. Um, but you can already proceed uh, with that. So as the uh, load balancing algorithm, we just check round robin, that's fine. And then we just create and buy the load balancer. So this now uh, takes a bit. So now we can have a look at the certificate. This one's been created and just takes a bit of time. So we're gonna wait. So meanwhile, while the certificate is being created, what we can do is um, we can just connect to the uh, server so that we um, yeah, spin up a simple Nginx there. So let's shish on the server. Um, oh yeah, so this is the uh, more or less the range. So what we were gonna do is by default we select uh, one. So this should allow us to connect. <coughs> so there we are. And then what we're gonna do is we will simply start uh, uh, Nginx uh, using Docker. Um, so Docker is installed via the cloud config that we pasted in uh, at the creation of the server. So then it's going to pull the image and then start the Docker container. So it will basically just spin up an Nginx uh, at port 80. As we can see, it's already created. Um, so we have this one done. And now what we want to do is we want to add the IP of the load balancer. So the public IP of the load balancer to our uh, DNS config of our actual domain. <coughs> so this one is unhealthy. I don't know why, maybe it's just because the uh, Docker container was just started yet. So I guess it was unhealthy, but I started it now and now it turns back to being healthy. So it's reachable, which I would expect. So now we have the load balance IP and what we're gonna do is we will create a record and uh, we will take an A record just for the domain uh, itself. And then once we've done that, so now let's open the website and as we can see, there it is. So the Nginx is um, responding and what we can also see is that the website is secured and the certificate is coming from Let's Encrypt. So that's it for today. In the future, I will most likely uh, cover a bit more the part uh, of setting all that up with uh, Ansible, but then also have the process of deployment using uh, Docker Compose um, to more or less have a bit more complex applications been running. So make sure to subscribe, leave a like, and that's it for today. Thanks.